When I was little, I took my Barbie doll with me everywhere. To the store, or even at church, so that she could sit beside me and listen to the pastor. She became a comfort when I was frightened even to the point where I started chewing on her thumbs when I got nervous, which eventually resulted in an eight-fingered Barbie doll. <laughs> the Barbie doll was a major part of my childhood, and possibly yours too. But as I have gotten older and have been learning more about modesty, self-esteem, and self-image, I have discovered that Barbie has a major flaw. She is far too focused on external image, and it is harming the generations that have grown up with her. Today, we will explore Barbie's figure, how she presents herself, and how those things combined can affect women of all ages. My first point is Barbie's figure. Since her introduction in 1959, the doll's very adult figure has been a source of controversy. At the time of her release, Barbie was one of the very few three-dimensional adult-looking dolls in the market. At the time, young girls mainly played with the three-dimensional baby dolls or the two-dimensional, more adult appearance paper dolls. But on a trip to Germany, Mattel designer Ruth Handler discovered the Build Lily doll, a doll that was actually based on a very adult cartoon of the day, and decided that there was a gap in the American doll market and brought her idea back to the States. This idea is what we know today as the Barbie doll. Originally, Mattel was very hesitant to put Barbie on the market, but in March of 1959, the first Barbie dolls hit the stores. She was an instant success with girls and women alike, but many mothers had two concerns. Barbie's very small waist and rather large bust. The concern is still holding true today. Over time, Barbie has had some plastic surgery, the most recent of which was in 1997 when Mattel decided to refabricate the doll in order to make her seem more realistic. I am not fully convinced of the new realistic look is, well, realistic, but anything is an improvement to the doll of the 90s. As you can clearly see, both dolls are clearly Barbie, yet they're both very different. In 1997, when they refabricated the doll, they widened her waist, reduced her bust, and widened her face. These are the things that make her seem more like a real human being. But I'm sure everyone here can agree that they've never seen a 17-year-old, which is how old Barbie is supposed to be, look like this. Now, if Barbie was a real live human being, she would be approximately five foot nine inches tall and weigh in at about 110 pounds. According to MayoClick.com's BMI or Body Mass Index calculator, she would be approximately a 16.2. The results state that for her age, a healthy BMI number would be between 18.5 and 24.9. This means that, big surprise, Barbie would be considered underweight. Also, many doctors agree that she'd be too thin to menstruate, and therefore in her current state, it would be very difficult for her to have children. Let's move on to my third, my second point, how Barbie presents herself. In my research, I found a line of dolls on the Mattel website titled Beauty fronted by three main dolls called Barbie Loves Hair, Barbie Loves Nails, and finally, Barbie Loves Makeup. Marketed towards girls five and older, these dolls display Barbie's, and quite frankly, the world's, obsession with external image. My personal favorite is the Barbie Loves Makeup doll. Clad in her short little dress, super high heels, and compact in hand, She's ready for a night out in the town, right? I do not believe so. This doll has color-changing makeup, which becomes bolder with ice water and more toned down with warm. Right now, she is sporting the cold water-induced evening look. Also, this particular set comes with glittery lip gloss for the girl, 
So they are not only giving girls an image of what beauty is supposed to look like, they are encouraging them to pursue it. I once saw a quote by an unknown author that states, Christian girls are beautiful, regardless of how they look, end quote. Do you remember the story of the ugly duckling by Hans Christian Andersen from your childhood? In the story, the duckling is verbally abused because he doesn't look like everyone else. And no one thinks much of him because he's different. The quote means essentially the same thing as the story. The world may tell you, or you may even tell yourself, that you're an ugly duckling. But they can't see you the way God does, as a perfect, beautiful creation. And this brings us to my third and final point. What exactly is Barbie doing to women? According to Wikipedia, in her 52 years, Barbie has held approximately 108 jobs, ranging from princess to computer whiz. If a girl can dream of becoming it, Barbie is one step ahead of her. When I was little and played with dolls, this was one of my favorite things about Barbie. She was everything. But the problem is, young girls are trying to follow in her footsteps. While I believe following dreams is a wonderful thing, Barbie is a very poor role model to follow. By the world's standards, she's anything a woman could ever want to be. She is beyond beautiful and successful in whatever she does. But this raises another question. Is Barbie giving young girls a false idea of success? But before we go any further, I would like to define the word success. Merriam-Webster's online dictionary defines it as, quote, a favorable or desired outcome, the attainment of wealth, favor, or eminence, end quote. Anyone can clearly see that Barbie fits this description very well. Her figure and achievements have become a standard of success for many women. And she seems to convey the message that you must be beautiful to be something in this world. While this simply is not true, many women believe it because it is all they know. The world begins to bombard women before they even leave their playpens by handing them a Barbie doll. Shortly after Barbie comes the magazines with computer enhanced images and shortly after these comes the wishing. I wish my eyes were as pretty as hers. And I wish my skin was as clear as hers. And why can't my hair be that beautiful? And the list could go on and on. And by this time, it's too late. A standard has been set. That standard tells women they must always be taller, always be thinner, always be perfect. In conclusion, today I encourage you to teach the young girls and young women in your life that they are beautiful, just the way they are. Quote, don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. Instead, you should clothe yourself with the beauty that comes from within, the unfailing beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so Precious to God. End quote. 1 Peter 3 3 through 4. I do believe if a young girl is raised in a loving Christian environment, she will prosper. The age at which Barbie is targeted is one of the most impressionable. And if parents can turn that into a tool to teach their young girls that they are beautiful just the way they were created, I believe a generation can be created to shine God's light instead of letting the world's dark lies take root. So today, I challenge you to teach the young girls and young women in your life that they are beautiful, just the way they are. And remember, there is no such thing as an ugly duckling in God's eyes. You are, and always will be, beautiful.